Hello, how are you? Let us pray. Father Lord, I thank you. I give you glory. I give you honor. I give you adoration. Thank you, Lord, for yet another opportunity to be able to speak your word. Father, I commit the listeners into your hands. Father, please meet them at the point of their needs. Speak to them, Lord. Father, and me that you are using as a vessel, the, the blessing attached to this, Father, let it not pass me by, Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. And at the end of the day, all glory and all honor back to you, Lord. Thank you, Father, for in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Hello, I hope you've had a lovely day, lovely week. And I know that more, you will still have more testimonies in the mighty name of Jesus. The title of today's topic is Applying God's Principle in Fulfilling Your Purpose. Yes, I know you've read so many books. You've, you've even been to so, so many cinemas, you've, uh, seminars. Sorry. I think I need to go to the cinema now. You've, you've read so, you've been to so many seminars and all that. You've read purpose, purpose, purpose. Everybody's talking about purpose. Do they think it's easy or, you know? But this, this, um, this topic is going to be looking at it biblically, not just on the basis of um, uh, just talking. It's going to be on a biblical way. And I know that at the end of the day, the Holy Spirit will minister to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Now, to fulfill your purpose in life, to fulfill God's purpose in life, not the purpose you have ordained for yourself or you've chosen. One of the things you need to do is ask God who you are. It's, it's, it seems strange, but it's very important. You need to ask God who you are. Because, you see, there are so many people walking on the street today that you find that that year in year out, we're already in June now, we're, we're in June 2015, year in year out, you just find that it's just the same thing, you know, like just going around the circle, left, right, center, you come back, you go this, you do that, and then you sit down at the end of the month, you find that there's nothing, you're not satisfied, you're not, you don't, you're not happy, whatever you're doing, you, you, you're not finding satisfaction there, then there's something wrong, and it's, it's really high time for you to find out who you really are and the only way you can find out the quite to find out who you really are is to ask god because it's god that created you he's the one that formed you whether anybody believes it or not is god god is the potter and you are the clay so you need to find out who you really are in certain cultures you know john people give um, give names to people based on sometimes ge geographical culture because of the the circumstances of the birds, people give names. Like if you read the book of First Samuel chapter five verse nine, a woman that lost her, she lost, she had a lot of tragedy on the same day. She lost her father-in-law, she lost her husband. So while she was about to um, to give birth, she called her child Ichabod because the circumstances surrounding the tragedy was because the ark of God was stolen from the Israelites. When and and Eli heard it, he broke his neck, you know, because he was an old man and he couldn't see. Then his sons died, his the, uh, brother-in-law died and her, and her husband died. So she called that child Ichabod. There's another uh, there's another man that was called Jabez, meaning sorrow. And then I have so many um, um, names. You know, if your name has something to do with a god, like in West Africa, specifically Nigeria, if your name has to do with um, like an Igbo land, Osu or something that's like Yam Festival or if you if you if somebody is bearing Linda it means snake. Diana means goddess of the of the moon. Osu means a demon deity. So you know there are different names like um, there's a child um, a child that is born with like um uh, with legs like instead of the child coming out with the head came out with the leg is called Ike. So there are different circumstances. So you need to check Sometimes you need to, you might not really, although yes, you're a child of God, yeah, all those um, things, um, it's not going to affect you. But there are some certain mountains you need to find out if you've been praying about certain things and you, you, you're a child of God, you're even tongue speaking and everything, but yet this mountain refused to move. Check out your name. Yeah, check out your name. Because sometimes you need to rename. As long as you're above, I think, 16. Change your name if your name is bearing something attached to a God, and yeah, the circumstances around you. I heard a story about a young man that every time he was always dreaming of drinking palm wine. Whenever he he, he had a um, testimony, uh, he had maybe like an appointment or something, and eventually when he prayed, he found out that his grandparents were um, 
God worshippers. And you know, I think they used to pour up palm wine in the God, but you know, so he, 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 he really, really matters. It doesn't matter your color, really, sincerely. It doesn't matter whether you're African because there's this mentality that people say, oh, it's Africans that have um, a lot of problems because of the culture. Every geographical location, they have their own strong man and strong old, old in that environment. It's just that it's been packaged very well now to fit the society, you know. So, you need to find out who you are. There are three, I would, I would name it like three um, uh, naming ceremony. Yeah. One, naming ceremony of your parents. Second, naming ceremony of yourself. What you call yourself. You hear people say, oh, if I'm angry. When I'm angry, I get very angry. And whenever I'm angry, nobody can curtail me. Your name is anger. Or I, I can't take it. I'm a very stubborn person. Your name is stubbornness, and you know I, I, I shared a topic recently about witchcraft. Meaning, you know, people. I know why some people saw that um, by, by the topic. Uh, oh, I'm not a witch. But if you read the first, um, the book of First Samuel, it says that anyone that is stubborn in the eyes of God, the the sin of witchcraft is the same thing like stubbornness. So I will implore you to go and listen to that. You know, it's not about witchcraft and all that. I don't celebrate demonic things. So. Barring if you call yourself, if somebody maybe you're trusting of uh, the child, and somebody, ah, I'm still childless, so that's your name. You've given your, you've given yourself that name. Then, of course, the only person that will give you a name that will last is God. If you read the book of Genesis chapter 32, verse 24 to 28, Genesis 32, verse 24 to 28, it talks about when Jacob wrestled with an angel of God and then the angel asked him what is your name would you tell me that he didn't know his name of course he knew his name but he wanted a, he wanted him to confirm who he really was remember he was the same person that stole in the birthright of Esau so he was literally bearing the name of Esau so at that encounter he had a change of name called Israel so and then um, Jesus Christ changed the name of Simon to Cephas in that's in the book of John chapter 1 verse 12 so God can change name God can even ordain your name from the womb like he did for John the Baptist so we need to find out who named you what's the meaning of your name okay yeah fine your name is the best in fact your name is um, I think uh, people that are meant to be right I think some the meaning of Edwin is richness or yes your name you, you are Edwin your name is the best name if I your name has a very good um, meaning but then you need to go back to God and ask God that oh God who really am I I'd like you to pause right now and ask God just say a very short prayer God who am I please show me who I am please you'll be amazed with the testimony with the revelation you would have you will be shocked so now we're now going to you might ask like somebody might be asking me that but how will god tell me do i need to go and meet somebody that has the gift or what am i supposed to do how will god speak to me how will god know one of the ways god speaks of course we know is through dreams so if you pray that prayer with a sincere heart and you 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 know you you desire it god will show you like when I gave my life to Christ, and I didn't need anybody to tell me that I needed to, I needed some certain things. I needed to know some certain secrets of my life. The Bible says that God is the revealer of secrets. He reveals secrets. He reveals secrets every day. But then it now depends on you if you want to be positioned to hear that secret, if you are not too busy for God. So, Aaron, God speaking to you through your dream. If you ask, he can tell you through your dreams. Even you knowing your purpose in life, you know, sometimes you might ask that, but what's the difference between a purpose, calling, and ministry? Because you get so confused. That uh, people are saying, what's my, my calling? You know, you, you somebody might say, oh, God has called me. Yeah, God can call you into different, um, different ministry. You know, it's not everybody that is called to be an apostle. It's not everybody that is called to be an evangelist. It's not everybody that is called to be um, a bishop. It is not. They are certain people that they've got different gifts in different ways, and that can only happen if God has given you that gift. God will give you a gift according to to his to your purpose, to what God has ordained you for. For instance, if God has called you to be 
to be in the hospitality business like you, you you're just you're just somebody that people love because you have this enthusiasm you're always happy people just love you you know you just don't know you 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 just carry this um positive thing about you so it's easy for you to relate with people you can you can start hosting parties you can it's easy for you to in fact there are even some people that all they do is like MC because they, are, they have this enthusiasm they have this aura around them they're they're just likable it's a gift you know it's not everybody it's not everybody that is friendly not that you know that's why i it's, i don't judge people like i don't judge people with because this person is quiet quietness does not mean the person is being um, is, is, a, is a snob no it, it's just that it's not that person's nature it is not the nature the nature is just quiet it does so such an individual cannot like okay look at the story of moses moses was a stammerer and he said he said i'm a stammerer i can't do this work god said okay i'll choose aaron maybe aaron was a talkative i don't know but because moses if moses knew his shortcomings so it's because he wasn't though god god could make god could change it god could empower his mouth and then he would but because he already said it so it's not always good this brings us to the fact that we shouldn't just uh, assume that because so so person doesn't do this thing he or she is just not no it might just not be that person's um uh, call <laughs> now identify your purpose now i've said dreams oh yeah by dream i see myself you can say i see myself i'm always in a room with nobody there is that my purpose obviously that's not what i'm talking about you know we've already prayed You've already prayed that God show me who you are. So the revelation you're going to see after is what you are. Ah, what do I mean by that? What do you mean by do I, is it that when I see myself cooking in a dream, maybe cooking meat or frying meat, <laughs> then that means I'm meant to be a cook. Yeah, it could be. It could be. So it depends on your dream. There are certain dreams that you have that you will know yourself. That what God is trying to tell you is that you need. You need serious prayers like if you see yourself maybe swimming in water or you see maybe you have a dream and then you see leave you know that's not very good that means you're going to be unstable in life or you see yourself maybe you see a dog you know that's not very good you see um animals when you ask about that who am i and then you see that you need to pray about it and god should take that away from you so that the, the real purpose of you the real purpose of God's call for you. And there's somebody listening to me. Your God has called you to be an evangelist. But because the enemy has blocked your eyes, you know, you can't even see beyond that. All you see is just negative, negative things. All you need to do is pray this prayer fervently. Sometimes you even need to fast with it. You need to fast. Because it's not about, you know, it's not microwave and Christianity. We, we don't want a microwave Christianity. Ooh, ooh. You listen to uh, speech uh, talks that will inspire you. Uh, that would jay you up, you shake, 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 and then you go back home, the problem is still there. So it, it, it comes with praying and fasting. So ask that question and God, God will reveal to you. Now, sometimes you might have had a dream in the past and this dream keeps coming back. It keeps coming back. God is trying to tell you something that this is what I've called you for. You remember I said it earlier that it's not everybody that is called into apostle. It's not everybody that is called to be a pastor. It's not everybody. There are some people that all they need to do, all their work in life, maybe it could be, it could be as as trivial as cleaning. I'm not talking about you being a cleaner. I'm talking about you setting up a cleaning company. You understand? I'm coming from. You might be the. You might be. I might be speaking to the next chef of the whole world you know so there's something that god has is has given to you that you must find that out and you find out through acting god and praying over it then one of the things is that you'll be empowered to fulfill that you'll find that, that you're very good at certain things than others even before i became a child of god i i i knew that if i if, I, if my mind is set to do something i would do it and i have this um um this gift in me i knew i had a certain gift that if i dream that dream it will come to pass exactly the way i dreamt it it might not be it might be the, that same day it might be the next day it might be years later now are you saying i'm joseph the dreamer yes i am i am a dreamer <laughs> i have god has empowered me with that gift so 
Well, dream is not a gift because everybody dreams. But dreaming to be able to interpret is a gift. It is a gift because uh, the book of Daniel says that Daniel could interpret dreams. He would, he would tell you the interpretation of the dreams. So that is a gift. So to be able to dream and interpret the dream, to be able to dream and interpret dreams about others, to be able to dream and see what will happen in the future. Personally, I think God is just trying to tell you that you're, you're going to be somebody that you, you've been called into the ministry of, I'll put it like ministry of uh, pastoral, because if, you, if you're a pastor, you must, you must be able to have the revelational gift. So if you have a revelational gift, if somebody comes to meet you and tells you that, oh, this, this, that, you've even seen it before the person approaches you. So it's easy for you to, to relate and tell the person, these are the things you need to do, this is the problem of the dream, this is the problem of your life and things like that. So, and you know, if we read the book of um, Colossians chapter 4 verse 12, Ephraim, he was an intercessor for the, for the church. That was his. That was his own. He, there are certain people that could pray for people, and there are some people that when you tell them pray, pray for the nation, the voice will go down. They just don't have it. You know, it's just not in them to kneel down. But it's one of those things that we need to be doing because it, even it makes you. That is one of the greatest things to be getting your prayers answered when you pray for others. Dedicate a day and pray for others. Don't pray for yourself. You find that, that all your all your problems, God will answer it because you care about others. So it's very important. Prisca and Aquila, they were uh, hospitals, they, 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 not hospital in the sense of the hospital building. Why I meant that they were hospita hospitability. They, they took care of Paul and all the apostles, maybe through feeding. Like when Jesus was, a, was around, was in the world as a man, he, he had, we had Mary, he had women and men around that made provision for different things. Look at Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus, he said, I will come into your house to eat today. So he made provision. So some people, God blessed them to bless men and women of God. God blessed them to sow into the kingdom of God. So you find that, that they are very they, they have the money. God blessed them for that purpose, for them to be able to bless others. So we need to look at it that God will empower you with the gift of with with the call of your life. As I earlier said, if God has called you into pastoral or prophetess or evangelist. You find that you have the gift of revelation. You dream before it happens. You dream. You, you dream about others. You know what the, the problem the problem of their life is. That is a gift that God is preparing you for. So you need to find that you sit down and analyze yourself and say, Oh, I think I'm very good with this. I'm very good. when I want to, when I buy something, I sell it quickly. Maybe I should start marketing things. Oh, maybe. There's a young lady I read a story. She loves um I'll try and remember the lady and she's making a lot of money. You know, so you need to find out that gift, that thing that that thing that you know you do better than others. <clears throat> like if you if you sing, you can sing. When you sing, everyone comes down. Even in your own room, when you're singing and you have a very nice voice, you know, but not people like us that are voices. <laughs> our voices can make a, <laughs> it to make the bed calm down and say excuse me please could you stop singing you are spoiling the mood that's a joke anyway my voice is not that bad then you need to focus on your specialty whatever God has called you for whatever whatever it is you need to focus on it you need to focus you need to get wisdom you need to seek knowledge of those things because, okay, like um, when when Jesus Christ wanted to send the the uh, the, uh, the disciples, the twelve, he said, "Go to uh, the Jews, you go to Judea, you go to Samaria." So there were specific places they needed to go to. Paul was a, a preacher for the Gentiles. Peter was a preacher for the Jews. They didn't join it together. <clears throat> there was a, a Bible passage I can't remember. It says, "Paul said, I saw Apollos watered." One of the two, I don't know. I don't want to mix it up. So you speciality, there has to be speciality. That's why if you if you've been called as a as a as an hairdresser, are you meant to be is it just for hair or you're meant to be doing both manicure, pedicure? 
or if you're in the fashion line is it for men or is it for women or is it for children so there must be speciality because when you specialize you'll be able to focus on what you're doing so i'm very sure now now you know why god you know what your purpose is you know that maybe you're meant to be somebody that is meant to get a cure for cancer you've been seeing it you've been in fact you've had a vision you've already you know i don't know what i'm talking to you maybe you've had a vision of certain things all you need to do is make a name just start don't just have the dream you find other people that maybe the person that, um, that that made the first car didn't just sit down in his room and say oh yes i think i know this thing he made of course you need to work on it you need to start start from somewhere small you know and god will help you as I said, the book of Proverbs chapter 1 verse 5 says that you should seek knowledge. When you seek knowledge, you'll be able to um, fulfill your purpose. But then there are certain things you need to know. There are certain things that could block you. You know, and as much as I've said it that, oh yes, you can do this, you can do that. Yeah, yeah, you can do all of it. But there are certain things you need to um, be aware of. One of the things that can hinder you feel your purpose is evil imagination you always imagine evil things you sit down you are imagining things that are not good those things can hinder you fulfilling your purpose there are so many people that they know what they want in life in fact they've started making progress then they become worried about the future let's say for instance god called you he said i want you to start a poetry how would you know use you might be seeing farm or something then you begin to get worried if i start if i start if i buy the chicken now what do i do is bed flow and then the chickens die have you bought it yet why do you think there will be bed flow why why do you think the the chickens will die you already imagine it and it will happen so evil imagination can be a source another thing that could be a source is ingrate you're ungrateful i'll share a revelation with you i had recently um you know i was a little bit worried <laughs> nature i was a little bit worried my old nature came up and i was worried about certain things and i slept that day and it was even in the afternoon i just had a vision and i heard a voice say ingrate 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 three times i woke up i was shivering i know that i said god i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry I'm sorry, I'm sorry for being ungrateful. I did not remember what God did yesterday. I'm worried about tomorrow. The Bible says that do not worry about tomorrow. It says that can you ask, can your child ask you for something, ask you for bread and you give the person a stone. God cares about us. God cares about you. So worrying about tomorrow, would it will make things worse. And it will make us ungrateful. It will, make, it, it, it will be unfair. Even to, if we look at it, humanly speaking, that... Ah, God that kept me throughout the night, God that provided for me yesterday. Why am I worried? Why am I being, you know, because being worried just shows that you're ungrateful. But when you lay everything, when you cast out your body, you, you believe that God can do it. He will do it. And I pray for you that God will give you the gift of faith. That though you're saying things being realistic, but you, you just stand on being unrealistic. That yes, I don't have this, but I claim I have it because I already have it. And I know God will help us in the mighty name of Jesus. The one of the third one is worry. You worry, worry. The Bible says, do not be anxious. Do not be anxious about tomorrow. Do not be tomorrow will take care of itself. So when you worry a lot, it, 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 it's it's um it's a very bad thing. It will hinder. If I why you worry, you become depressed. You know you 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 are not happy. And then maybe that's the day somebody is going to give you a call and say, please, can you uh, provide these products for me? Or can you do this? And because even you are not in the, in the very good mood, the way you will sound, you might never pick your phone. And then you miss it. God will not allow you to miss that, that moment of your destiny in the mighty name of Jesus. So what must I do? Because I, I don't, um, it's good to share all these things out there, but you need to know what must you do. Or it's a different thing listening to all the things and then you don't apply the principles or you apply the principles and you don't know what to do. One of the things you must do, you must be determined. Rugged determination. You must be somebody that is very adamant. That yes, 
whether anybody likes it or not i will do what god whether it's setting up a business i will start be determined be somebody look if you read the story of david and goliath david did not negotiate he said i will cut off your head he did it he didn't uh, he didn't say he didn't say oh um let me think about it um okay he said it he said i come to you in the name of the lord and he did it be vulgar people will criticize you the people that will criticize you when you begin to prosper they'll be the one to celebrate you so sometimes i love criticism because it makes me want to do more i love people telling me you know like I, it, 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 when you criticize, you say something like that. I ask people, I say, please just tell me where you think, maybe there's somewhere. Tell me. I'm telling you, I'll be very happy because criticism will make me do more. It, it will make me do more and it will make me know that, oh, yeah, at least I'm a bit appreciated. Not that you don't. That's why I'm, I'm employing you now. Try and subscribe on the channel and then leave comments whenever you watch it, please. Thank you. Then you need to cut off time wasters in your life. There are different kinds of human beings in life that you don't need. There are some people that will drain you. When you share a vision with them, all they see is negative things. They don't have anything positive to say. You need to cut them off. Surround yourself with people that share the same thing with you, that have passion, that they are zealous. They are not people that are lazy. You know, you will know them. You know, you know the people that are surrounding you. You know them. But while doing that, you have to do it with wisdom. It's not that you just cut off people like that. You cut it off with wisdom. You know, you, you don't cut people off like that. You just try, you know, you minimize. And then, it's always good to share your dreams, of course, because while you're sharing your dreams with others, somebody might just have an idea that, oh, oh, I know somebody that can do this. So I, I'm not even against people sharing dreams. It's very important. I share my dreams. I share it with people that are quite close to me. Oh, this is the revelation I had. Oh, this is the thing. Can you, what do you think? Can you pray with me? It's very important because in fulfilling God's purpose, you cannot do it on your own. No man is an island. You need one person and you need the, the body, even the body as itself. You need the hand to be able to put uh, food in your mouth. You need your leg. You need things around you to be able to help you for efficiency. So definitely you need people around you. Remember the story of Lazarus. When Lazarus died, God said, Jesus Christ said, for the people around him, he said, untie, remove the grave clothes around him. There were the people around him that helped. And I know that God will help. He will help you. And I know that you've been blessed. And I'm very sure that at the end of this, by the time you apply these principles, you'll be able to say confidently like John, when they went to make inquiry in the book of John chapter 1, from verse 12, they said, John, who are you? Are you Elijah? Is the Messiah? Are you Messiah? He said, no. I am the one crying out in the wilderness to prepare the way for Jesus Christ. He knew his purpose and he stuck to it. And I know that God will help us. And if you're listening and you have not yet, you don't even know, you don't even know what I'm talking about. You don't, you don't know, you're not sure what she's talking about. It will be, a, it will be gibberish to you if you're not yet a child of God. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. It is he that believes in him. That will come into the house of that person. It will come into your heart. It will begin to lead you. It will begin to show you. For you to have the privilege of asking God that who really I am is because you have a relationship with him. If you don't have a relationship with God, what happens is that the enemy will just be confusing you. Remember, he comes as an angel of light. So he will come. He will just bring different things into your, your dream life. It would, it would contaminate your dream life. So you become confused. You find that some people are electricians. They are electricians, they are builders, they are painters, everything together. Jack of all trade. I remember a man, when I was little, we, we used to call him Mr. Yellow. This man, you want to repair fridge, you can do it. Repair, <laughs> drive a car, eat everything. Though I was little, I still remember him. He was, we used to call him Jack of all trade, you know. So you can't. You, you, the enemy will just bring different things, different things to you. You, 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 you won't be sure of the reason why you're on earth. That's why you find people try this business; it doesn't work out. They try this business. It's good for you to be trying, but it's better for you to try one thing, focus on it, and you make money, you prosper. Look, Christianity is not about poverty. 
God wants us to prosper. He wants his children to prosper. What God does not want is covetousness. You want your greediness. Once you are content, you will be able to afford the basic things of life. You will be able to drive the best car, live in the best house. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. If God is the owner of everything, why should we, his children suffer? No, he doesn't want us to suffer. So all you need to do is surrender your life to Christ. All you need to do is just say a very short prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, forgive me my sins. I, I know you died on the cross of Calvary for my sake. Forgive me my sins. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you. Be the master of my life. Write my name in the book of life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Now you're a child of God. All you need to do is now get a Bible. If you don't have one, please send an email to me. Get a Bible. And I know that God and I know that God will help you. Let us pray. Father Lord, I thank you. I give you glory. Thank you, Lord, for this opportunity. Father Lord, be with everyone, Lord. Let them have a testimony. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have a lovely day and I hope to see you soon.